A really important message. And don't forget, there's no early kickoff on Saturday this week. So the Premier League football gets going with four simultaneous matches. Bournemouth host Leicester, Chelsea welcome Wolves, Man City take on Southampton and Newcastle face Brentford. The late game is Brighton against Tottenham before four games on Sunday. First up, it's Crystal Palace versus Leeds and West Ham against Fulham before Arsenal play Liverpool at the Emirates. And then Manchester United travel to Goodison Park to take on Everton. The match week finishes with more Monday night football as Nottingham Forest play Aston Villa. And joining me in the studio to preview all of those matches, former Premier League winner Tim Sherwood and journalist Sam Lee. Good to see you both. Um, we're here off the back of what's been another frantic week in Europe, but positive results for all the Premier League teams, mm. including Spurs. They were the only side that didn't actually win, Tim, yeah. but... A decent draw and a much improved performance from the North London derby, wasn't it? Absolutely. I think Antonio Conte and the Tottenham team come in a little bit of criticism after the North London derby about the approach. You know, it was very negative. Got a lot of bodies behind the ball. Didn't really have a go in that game and got what they deserved, which was nothing. So looking for an improvement in the performance is tough to go, to go away in, in Champions League. They know that. Antonio Conte knows that. And I thought the performance was a little bit more encouraging the way they played. I thought they deserved to win the game. Uh, couldn't score the goal, uh, which they needed to take maximum points. So, you know, they're, they're still in it. They're still in it. And I think favourites to, to qualify out of the group. And the three teams in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League all winning Manchester United just about, just about yeah. scraping through in Cyprus. Yeah, well, at half time, I was thinking it's not going to be another Man United crisis week, is it? Because you think they just, obviously, with the Derby defeat at the weekend, it's another bruising result for this new United era. Mm. But overall, under Ten Hag, you think, okay, it's going some way. You think they can't lose again, can they? But no, they obviously turned it around. And, you know, West Ham winning three out of three. Uh, that's great. You know, European football has been great for them in the last year or so. And to see it starting off again and Skamaka scoring again, yeah, it's really interesting times for them. And, you know, in terms of the Premier League, you think they're going to bring that form back with them and then really push on now. Mm. Welcome back to Team Talk. Sunday's standout game sees Arsenal host Liverpool as Mikel Arteta and Jurgen Klopp prepare for the latest instalment of a Premier League classic. Yeah, we can't wait for this one. It is Arsenal against Liverpool. Let's hear what both managers had to say ahead of the game. Jurgen Klopp, but first, Mikel Arteta. Every game is the same. Obviously, this is a big match. Um, it's a fixture that everybody is looking for um, against an opponent that has shown in the last five or six years the level that they have. And we have to show against those opponents that um, we have raised the level and we are ready to compete uh, against them. You're always going to get better. You always see as well the weaknesses that uh, you want to improve. And um, what is certain is they are a magnificent team. It's a young team, very exciting team. And doing really well, and they are in the position they are, well deserved. So, um, but now we go there, um, and obviously we don't think about the games we played against them because it makes not too much sense. But um, so we will try, uh, yeah, to cause them problems. I think that makes sense, huh? um, and so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we are too. It's um, certainly the standout game of the weekend and it comes on Sunday. Who do you think is going to win this one? Is, is it quite a hard one to call, Tim? It is, because I, I do believe Liverpool sooner or later will click. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure they're there at the moment. Arsenal certainly are. Um, Jürgen mentions the young side and it's exactly right. I mean, they're all listening. And we talked about Man City. Now, the two best players Arsenal have are two players City let go. <laughs> Zinchenko and Jesus have been magnificent. So... Everyone seems to be fit now. He's given them a, a run out in, in, the, in Europe, uh, Mikel. Everyone feels part of it there. They must be so happy there at London Coney at their training centre. Everyone wants to be part of this journey. Now, everyone's waiting for the trip up, as we always do, whether it's Tottenham or whether it's Arsenal, because over recent seasons, they've not been able to sustain, sustain their performances. But I think this is a little bit different now. I think they're enjoying it. They're very brave in the way they approach the game. Um, they open up the pits, they trust each other. I mean, Xhaka, for me, I felt, felt six years ago, he played his last game and he threw the armband down. Now he, he's driving the team forward, looks like a real good leader. Um, and, you know, the table doesn't lie. I mean, f for me to stand here, and we've always talked about Man City, they're not the best team in the league, but, you know, they're up there on merit because Mikel Arteta and that group of players are doing something very, very right at the moment. And 
Long may it continue. I think game for, for Liverpool. Everyone expects Liverpool to maybe click. This might be the big game what they need, but it's going to be very difficult for them. Yeah, Arsenal have been so good this season, yeah. Sam. As Tim said, there seems like such a good spirit amongst the team as well. Winning in the week in, in Europe, but also coming into this game off the back of that North London derby win yeah. last weekend as well. How much more confidence would that give them against Liverpool? Yeah, I think it will. And I, and I think that's, that's the thing. When you asked that initial question, who's going to win? I was thinking, oh, I'm really not sure. Because again, like Tim was saying, you think Liverpool will be fine. And when I'm thinking from a Man City point of view, who's going to be their biggest challenges? I'm thinking it's going to be Liverpool. But I think teams that have taken the game to Liverpool have really got some joy. You saw that table there. They've only won two games this season. Brighton last week played really well against them. And if Arsenal start off, you know, in that confident mood because of the last few games and they really take the game to them with Martinelli, Saka, Jesus, then give Liverpool all sorts of problems because yeah. they've not been defending cohesively. We'll see some more about Trent Alexander-Arnold and whether he's a good defender or not when he's yeah. got those kind of tests. Van Dijk's struggled as well. And yeah, if it is classic Liverpool, then you just think, you know, they played Arsenal back end of last season. And it was like there was no doubt that they were going to get there eventually. But this weekend, there really mm. is doubt. And I think mm. Arsenal could really get at them what, and, and ex expose some of their problems. What was it that they did so well in the North London derby, Tim? Well, I think Tottenham made mistakes. I think they played too negative. You know, got behind the ball. They didn't really put any pressure. You don't put pressure on good players with a lot of confidence, as Arsenal have at the moment. They will open you up. Um, and that's what they did. It's going to be a completely different game. Liverpool won't sit back. They will come at them. It might suit Arsenal. You know, there might be more room there. Um, the trouble is... I Tottenham's looked strong. I thought Tottenham would look strong when Arsenal had the ball. They were looking for the turnovers, but Arsenal were very good in possession. Whereas Liverpool might capitalise a little bit more. We're all waiting for Mo Salah to come to the party. At the moment, he's had a very slow start to the season. Um, he played a very attacking side in, in Europe. I, I think he will go with that again against Arsenal. I think he, Jürgen now thinks the best form of attack for them, defensively, had not been great, is to really get at sides. And, and Arsenal are there to be got at because they play an expansive way. You know, they play very open in, on the field. There's a lot of space to exploit. But if Arsenal play well and their passing's good and their interchanging is very good, as it's been, it's going to be a, I mean, it's a great game to watch. It's one for, everyone wants to tune into this football match because mm -hmm. you all know what to expect. It'll be toe to toe. No one's going to take a backward step. It'll be a basketball match and I'm looking forward to it. Jürgen Klopp said that he wants his side to be unpredictable. To be, well, to be fair, they've been, <laughs> yeah. they have been unpredictable this season, that. but, but not in actually a, a good way. Yeah, you're right. But that's, that's because it's the whole, I guess, I, I guess what he means by that is in terms of what they're going to do up front, but yeah, in, on the other the other meaning of that word is unpredictable because Nunes he hasn't scored since the opening weekend of the season. Firmino's actually done well. Luis Diaz is a box of tricks, but you never you know he's not, he's not quite as consistent as Sadio Mane was, and obviously Salah is a bit hot and cold. So you've got that unpredictable element. But I guess what he means is they want to have lots of threats and they want they want you know the assists from the fullbacks again, and they want you know the, the midfield's never been that. Mm kind of they've not really contributed massively to the goals directly mm. but maybe just a bit more variety because at the moment it's just been a bit mm. stodgy and relying a lot on Firmino to score goals and obviously that's not what they've ever had to do but yeah I mean they certainly have been unpredictable but not in the way that the way that he wants. Looking at those results though Tim the only two wins they've had in the Premier League are against Bournemouth and Newcastle mm. you wouldn't expect that from Liverpool would you no, at this point? No and they know I mean that was lucky the Newcastle one wasn't it? Absolutely and Jürgen knows he's got a lot of work to do it can't be as simple as just taking Sadio Mane out of there and then falling apart they need to find a different way he is a big miss we know he is Nunez really but he's a different type of player mm. you know he's a player who plays up as a nine he's a six foot four stick on striker whereas before they've all been fluid in the forward areas Jota's back in the side now I think he helps them out with the creativity mm. as well uh, I'm waiting for Liverpool just to come alight and um, it might be this weekend it might be the big game what they need you know to get Arsenal sitting there pretty top of the table this is the game they need to win and give them that confidence. I think everyone is expecting that eventually things will kind of go back to where they were last season with Liverpool and things will click mm -hmm. and everyone will yeah. start playing well and Salah will be scoring goals, etc, etc. But what if they don't? If they don't, they've got a problem. And you're absolutely right, everyone does expect it. And I'm talking like I expect it. Just, I mean, and Jürgen, I was lucky, the Newcastle one, wasn't it? Absolutely. And Jürgen knows he's got a lot of work to do. I'm waiting for Liverpool just to come alight. And um, it might be this. week it's not like that it's never easy this is the Premier League this is a very tough league and it might be the big game what they need you know to get Arsenal sitting there but what if they 
they've got a problem. And you're absolutely right, everyone does expect, and I'm talking like I expect it just to happen, but there's a lot of hard work. Jürgen's talk about going back to basics, and he's absolutely, I think he needs to get back to basics. He needs to be the leader in that dress, absolutely right. Where is that rock at the back? Where is Van Dijk at the moment? He almost looks like he's strolling through the games. He's found it very easy since he's come to the Premier League and he's changed their fortunes. He's a magnificent player, we know that. And everyone looks across to him to say, drive us on, and I think he needs to start that. It looks to me like he's playing at one pace at the moment. It feels like it's a little bit now. Henderson has to play. They need leaders in their dressing room. Milner's coming towards the end now. I, think, I don't think he will start. I think they'll play a very attacking side. But down the court, Alisson in goal, Van Dijk and uh, Jordan Henderson are paramount importance for them because they will drive the rest of the side on and you need to get the ball forward early. Get the ball forward to... Um, it's not like that. It's never easy. This is the Premier League. This is a very tough league. Mo Salah. Mo Salah at the moment, we haven't seen him. Mm. We haven't seen him because I think they're trying to make too many patterns in the middle. Man City play that way. They're very, very... Um, you know, patient in their build-up, whereas Liverpool always used to win the ball when when Alden was there and Milner and Henderson. They used to get it forward early to Sadio Mane and to Mo Salah. At the moment, they're making too many passes. Get it forward mm. quick. Get Trent round the outside. You need Robertson firing down the left-hand side as well. That is how they're going to change it. They got to, they got to know what. Robertson firing down the left-hand side as well. That is how they're going to change it. They got to, they got to know what they've done. I think he needs to get back to basics. He needs to be the leader in that dress room. Get the ball forward to... Um... That's the new Brighton manager dancing, but Liverpool far <laughs> from it. Just two wins all season, 11 points dropped already in this Premier League campaign. And wherever you turn, Michael, Trent Alexander-Arnold seems to be the name on everybody's lips. Is he being unfairly singled out for you at the moment? Well, I don't think there's any question that he's not he's not in the top form um, not in the form that we've seen in previous seasons but there's lots of players I mean Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah I could go through the whole team at the moment and say not many players are, are playing at the top of their game so I think it it is unfortunate for him but he set these high standards and you want to be talked about all the time you know we wouldn't be talking if you were an average player we wouldn't be doing analysis on him and be talking about him so he's probably got to accept that and appreciate that um, for what it is but there's no question that that He's under the microscope, and we're going to have a look at him again in terms of some positives, some weaknesses. What in particular is going wrong for him at the moment? Well, let's look at him from, it's a, from a defensive point. Nobody questions him going forward. Nobody questions the array of, of passing he's got, his vision. Everything about him going forward is just amazing. Defending is, is where people are pointing the finger at the moment. And we'll have a look at a few clips here. Um, this is a, against Manchester United. And the, the one thing I suppose you don't do in, in, in this situation is get done on a 1-2. I mean, you're exposed slightly, but a ball can come in here. The runner goes in there. And, and, and it, it's a simple, it's one of the hardest things to defend. But, you've, you know, you've got three or four yards on your man here. So you've got to be aware. How is he going to get past me? How do I prevent it? And he's very flat-footed. The ball goes in and it's almost... It's not even close, that's the thing. It, 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 they're finding it easy to, 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 to get in in behind. So a one-two there, and, and the ball ends up in the back of the net, which is, of course, you know, fingers will be pointed at him. In this situation here, again, on the back post, he, he knows what's around him. He lets the first runner go, that's fine. He's probably shouting his man, but again, he needs to be aware of what's around him. He doesn't jump, he doesn't, you know, make any effort to make it difficult for his man. And again, then, we, we come on to the Brighton game. He didn't do too much wrong in this Brighton game at the weekend, but when the microscope's on, then everybody's going to look at you and we'll just roll it a little bit quicker and then slow it down. In this situation, he heads it back into the danger zone. Probably not the wisest thing. Could he go back to the goalkeeper? Could he head it high and wide? And then he makes another mistake. He goes in, inside, starts challenging for it, then slips over, and all of a sudden his man gets on the, uh, on the outside of him and bangs it into the, into the far corner. Again, in this, uh, this next goal for, for Brighton, same thing. Decision-making. Can, can he head the ball back? Can he just nod it? You know, He can either just cushion the ball in here, can he head it back? Can he just clear his lines and, and go? Lots of different things, but what you don't really want to do is chest it down and get caught in the middle of, you know, in, in your half with, uh, with Brighton players running onto you. And, of course, is the, is the run then, once he loses the ball, is, is he busting a gut to get back in, to challenge, to try to win it? People will question um, that as well. So there's a few things defensively that are going wrong at the minute, but we all know that that is not his strength. His strength is going forward.
and he's normally being helped out and covered, as we've seen in seasons before. When you've planned to play Liverpool, they haven't been like that, have they? No, and I think that's, you know, I think Mo's got the, the, the actual strengths of what Trent is all about. I think the biggest question what everybody always uh, always goes on about when Trent is, it's, it's when the ball passes him as a defender, what's his reaction to it, and you see it, and you'll see it in, it, it, it's, it's a more of a, it's a jog back. When he's going forward, you see him, he's sprinting. <laughs> and I think that's where people have this sort of um, perception. perception of Trent, and he's a forward-thinking player, but I think obviously that's where Klopp wants him to play. In terms of team talks, when other players or other teams are about to come to Anfield, I mean, if I was if I was in your shoes, I'd be thinking he's very dangerous. We'll have to stop it. But also on the flip side, he's probably the the, the player that we can get out most. How would you go about tactically playing against someone like Trent? Yeah, I mean, look, well, th this is a lad who I mean, everyone's sort of having a pop at, and and what we've done in previous seasons, we've sort of stuck two out on him because he's been the one who's been the most influential in the assists, in where the play goes, where Jurgen Klopp wants to play through. You know, I think you talk, you hear him talk all the time about Jordan Henderson having to get over and help him out and be, you know, and do that defensive job for him because of the quality this lad has on the ball. So we, we and we've found that in the transition when we do win the ball back as you've just said, we can then hopefully expose that, them spaces, what he leaves, and try and get in behind Liverpool. So, you know, I think this is, you've just said it there, at this moment in time, he's going through that, 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 that um, we've all been through it, that, that time where nothing's really going right. You see it there, he didn't really do anything wrong, no. did he, again, uh, against Brighton, but he goes, he goes in, he, he sort of misses it, but then as he goes to turn, he's still with the player and then slips, and then it's like, oh, now he's done everything wrong. So, yeah, I, I think sometimes it's a bit unfair, the criticism, but I think, uh, you know, he gets a, enough enough plaudits, you know, to, to warrant that sometimes yeah. when he's not getting it right to get it. 19th of October, we'll see if the West Ham plan works. No, don't give me <laughs> yeah, that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was really interesting insight. But uh, let's remind ourselves uh, before the Brighton game that Trent Alexander-Arnold's manager, Jurgen Klopp, said this in his defence. If we do high press, very often, not always, but very often, Trent is the highest of all three in the back. So it means in the press, in a high press situation, he's the one who goes through right. And that's the way we play football. Now you can say, yeah, then defend better. You know, you cannot have everything. So if you want to have press, you need players in specific positions. We either, we either way do a striker a bit wider, put a striker a bit wider to, to, to cover that area and a midfield a bit higher, or we, we cover that the last line with three players, plus Fabinho or whoever plays the six, and have him higher. So now we don't get the ball there, and the next ball goes long on that side. Yeah, now Joel, um, Joey, Ibu, whoever on that side plays, um, has to cover that, and that's fine. That's a risk we take. It's not a, it's not a crazy risk. We win the ball in, in nine out of ten times, but in that one moment where we don't win it, people ask, where's Trent? And that's a question I don't understand. It's, it's, it's just, everybody watches football that often, that long. Why you would then say, yeah, he has to be, uh, that's his main job. But I told him he has to be there. So, other situation, we, 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 we press extremely brave when we are good. We, we, and actually, in a, we depend bad when we didn't press brave. Maybe just were waiting a little bit because nobody knew exactly, will he still go, will he, all these kind of things. So, we, we, we are extremely brave in these situations.